Hi, I'm Mitchell Dale, and this is Rugby League Week's Friday Arvo Footy. Joined on the couch today by Steve Mascourt from Thanks, Rugby League Week. Thanks for joining us, Steve. Eric Growth from the Cronulla Sharks. Now, boys, big game tonight, Australia and New Zealand. I know the Kiwis hate it when us Aussies get a bit, little bit cocky, but at the risk of being an arrogant Aussie, uh, is it Australia by how much, how many tonight? Firstly, compliment on your canary yellow shirt, beautiful. Um, secondly, Australian gold. I, I think 20 plus, the Aussies. I, I'd like to hope that it's going to be a lot closer, but just judging on some of those selections and some of the people who've been left out, I can't see it happening. Given the colour of our shirts, I think we're supposed to tip New Zealand. Yes. But uh, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think, uh, unfortunately, they're you know, badly below strength, uh, the Kiwis. It's a very strong Aussie team. I think they'll pick up where they left off at Old Trafford. And uh, maybe the Kiwis, as usual, will go with them for half a game or an hour. And then it'll be a comfortable victory for the green and gold. Yeah, they are under strength on, on two fronts, I think. They've had a, a few blokes who aren't available. But some strange selections from Steve Carney, particularly a few blokes who he's chosen to leave out. Now that begs the question, is he just treating this game as a bit of a trial run and, and looking forward to the next World Cup? It doesn't matter if they get beaten, he's just trialling a few young players. The pre-season I was under Steve Carney, um, I can tell you he's a man about principles, so that leaves a feeling in my mind that Jared Warrior Hargraves has done something wrong, because I think he's the top three props in the game at the moment, and you ask any player who they don't want to play against, and he's number one just about every time. Yeah, there, there's been some stats, though, published this week, hasn't, hasn't there, uh, where Jared Warrior Hargreaves' performances uh, in the black and white haven't been what we would expect. Um, certainly in the World Cup final, the stats suggest he didn't do very much at all. So I think it is conceivable that he was left out on form and, 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 and there isn't a hidden agenda there, but it's still a, a pretty, uh, you know, it's a pretty shocking um, uh, omission, in, in, you know, given his form at club level and his stature in the game. Absolutely, a very green side as well. Five rookies with a sixth who is 18th man. So they're really planning for the future. But one Australian player who wouldn't care who they've picked is Matt Gillett. He is debuting tonight. We caught up with him and Corey Parker this week. Let's see what they had to say. The boys, uh, some of the boys went and did a bit of training and Sammy was doing his fitness test. Um, so he got that out of the road and then obviously he pulled up pretty sore and he's not right. So uh, Sheen's had come and told me uh, once we got back to the hotel and Oh uh, yeah, mate. Just uh, it's pretty good news, and straight on the phone to the wife and mum and dad, and I uh, got a bit bit croaky in the voice when I was telling them um, they'll be playing on Friday night. So I just oh, yeah, I can't wait. Obviously, the, a lot of the talk at the moment is about your teammate, your club teammate, Matt Gillett. What are your thoughts on him making the side? Very pleased for him, mate. Yeah, he's. Um, I mean, he's been thereabouts for a few years now, and he was uh, he was 18th man for this game last year. You've only got to see how he plays the game, and. Um, you know, he can break a game right open, he's powerful, he's, you know, he's defensively he's very good. He's, um, he's from Bribey, he's very laid back. Um, uh, the original prankster, probably. Um, he's, he loves his pranks and playing jokes on people, so uh, yeah, he, he doesn't take, him tell, take himself too seriously. Yeah, the original prankster, Matt Gillett, um, joining the Australian Test Club, club that you're in as well. Eric, what do you reckon he's going through? Mate, he'll be nervous, but he'll be looking around the room, having a look at the calibre of players sitting next to him, and he'll be OK, and he can play footy, that kid. And it also means he gets to go to the Kangaroo reunion now, which is, what's that like? Yes, well, I only played one test. It was against France in front of basically nobody, but big honour nonetheless. But, yeah, I get to go to the Kangaroo reunions every year now, so just from one test, and people tease you when you're there, but it's all good fun, and I love it. <laughs> Very good. Boys, a quick tip for tonight? Uh, Australia by 20 plus. I'd say 20. By yeah, I'm going to stick with these two. Australia by 20 for me. City Country, the annual clash is on this Sunday. Boys, this week we've seen more withdrawals than an ATM at a casino. There are boats pulling out everywhere. Steve, is the game on borrowed time? Yeah, I don't think it is because of the current TV deal. I think we've got three years to go in the current arrangement, but it just doesn't have the support of the, the, the players or the clubs anymore. And, you know, I'm really, really concerned about it. I think we have to move... We need a representative weekend, but I think we've got to move it really. And, and um, State of Origin is the only game big enough to hide uh, some of these uh, fixtures, if you like. Uh, you know, that's the reason really uh, that City Country's on this weekend is because the New South Wales team is going to be picked in a couple of weeks. But I mean, is it really a selection trial anymore? You know, that's that's the question. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's a selection trial at all. I think definitely still have the game, maybe put it pre-season a bit like they do with the All Stars game. I just can't see the point in putting it where it is now. It's now become a week off for players, and I think a lot of players actually look forward to that. And I think you see too many withdrawals. And you're not playing your best for the best. Like, look at 
Michael Leisha, he's played three first grade games off the bench mm. and now he's starting for the city team and good on him, it's not his fault, but how can you justify that it's the best of the best, you know? And he's going to be a superstar of the future, no doubt. But yeah, for me, I don't want to get country people offside because you get them, line, line them up in here and they'll all tell you passionately why it should be still played. But move, move it for sure. Interesting you said that. We caught up with Jared Mullen this week. He's pumped to play for country. Let's have a listen to what he says. An honour to represent your uh, country region. Yeah, it's great. Um, every time you put on the country jersey, it's a great honour and you're representing all the people out in sort of you know rural areas and out in the farm and stuff like that. So I've still got a lot of family out there, so I'm sure they'll be very proud. And I'm sure a lot of boys here have a lot of family still living out there too. So uh, it's going to be a great day on Sunday and hopefully get a win. Where from exactly are you? Uh, I was born in Singleton, but then I uh, lived in Taree. Um, grew up on a farm out there in Cundletown. So, um, but I moved to Newcastle when I was 10, so I've been in Newcastle you know, pretty much my whole life. But um, yeah, I've still got a lot of family out back Taree, way and out Cranbrook way, so I'm sure they're all proud. I love playing for country. It's the fourth time playing now, but uh, Probably more meaningful is getting out to the country areas and, and seeing all the kids and all the families out there because um, you know, some of them probably never seen an NRL game or anything like that. So it's good to get out there and, and meet all the families and kids and um, mix it with, with NRL players. So it'll be good for them. OK, so that begs the question, Eric. You've played for City. Do the country boys take it more seriously than the City guys? I don't think so. Well, we won our game. And I know when I was selected for City, it was my first ever rep game. I was blown away. I, I was so happy because the year before, I didn't have such a great year. So, mate... Yeah, I, I don't think it's, you know, I can see what they what they mean, why they build it up, that country, it means more to them, you know, it's kind of struggle out in the country, a lot of struggle stories, and, and it's it's great to have that to kind of look forward to, but I wouldn't say it's more important. Yeah, I, you know, I want to see that and see and hear the country crowd actually um, uh, give me the impression on Sunday that they care about the result, because every city country game I can recall going to, uh, people have been talking amongst themselves. I don't care if that upsets people. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. I want, I want, I want it to sound like a mini origin. I want it to know that you want country to win because at the moment it actually, it may not be a selection trial for the, uh, uh, for the selectors, but it seems like one for the crowd because they're just, they, they don't seem to care who's going to win. Yeah. Well, after 4,000 people rocked up to Coffs Harbour last year, a lot of people need to turn out at, at Dubbo again to prove it means something to the country folk. Boys, quick tip again. Eric, who do you think? I think City, mate. Too strong. Uh, country by one. Yeah, I think City, <laughs> very good, very strong forward pack. Even after Wade Graham, your mate from Cronulla's pulled out, I still think City, good forward pack. They'll be a bit too strong. Huge weekend for the Sims family. Tonight, the eldest sister, Ruam, will play for the Women's All-Stars against the Indigenous All-Stars in the curtain raiser to the Test match. Tomorrow, Brother Ashton will captain Fiji. Youngest brother Corbin will also play in that game against Samoa. And on Sunday, Tarek will take his place for country origin. Uh, on top of that, sister CJ will also be playing gridiron on the Gold Coast. Huge weekend, as I said. We caught up with Ruan and Corbin this week. They're all pretty excited about it. Let's listen to it. Yeah, it's fantastic. You know, it's, uh, you know, not many families can say that they've got a lot of rep footy going on in the one weekend. And um, especially being... Uh, girls and boys so it's a pretty big time for our family um, mum and dad are you know trying to figure out how they're logistically going to get to see everything but uh, yeah it's it's pretty awesome obviously you're the oldest in the family I think um, were you the one who used to bash up the boys no never we always used to have wrestling though and I think you'll find a lot of the uh, tapes you'll see we used to have Friday night fight night which was wrestling we pushed all the loungers to the side in front of the fireplace in the lounge room and we'd all have a wrestle so it was always good fun who was the winner Oh, there were a few winners. I guess it just depended. But Ashton used to have to wrestle the two smaller ones on his knees. And then uh, when they got a bit bigger, I smartened up. I wisened up and went, OK, I'm just going to take myself out of it now. And uh, yeah, but they still kept going, so it was good fun. Yeah, it is. You know, we, um, yeah, I'm extremely happy um, with how my family has been represented this week. We're getting a few, uh, few different messages from everyone saying congratulations. So it's, uh, it's great to have all the support, and especially all on the one weekend. You know, we can, um, we can all watch each other's games, which is going to be great. OK, the Benji Marshall debate rages on uh, in Rugby League Week. This week, we asked a simple question, can he still cut it? Is he worth the gamble for a club to pick him up this year? Uh, responses range from, of course, he's got all the skills to he can go and jump in a lake and should have stayed in New Zealand, played netball for the Silver Ferns. Boys, simple question, Benji Marshall, is he still up to NRL? I definitely think he is. I think if he's doing the training and he remains fit and healthy, mate, he's a bit of a world beater when he wants to be. Frame of mind, good can't stop him. Yeah, I think he is. Um, I'm not sure that we're ever going to see him recapture uh, what he was like in his pomp, but I think he's definitely a, a first grader. There's no doubt he's a yeah. first grader. 
No, I think that's, that's the key point. Uh, it's, we, we won't see the 2005 or 6 or 7 Benji. We'll probably see, you know, he'll be a little bit slower, but still certainly I would say as well worth, worth a gamble as a, as a bargain by mid-season as well. Will you ask blokes who've played football with him and even against him, they say he's one of the greatest football brains to ever play the game. He's so smart, he knows how to direct teams around the field and obviously you've seen his freakish talent. I think that can be recaptured. I think he was stale at the Tigers. He needed a fresh start, and this will be what that is. I think the other thing will be that he's got a point to prove. He's gone over. He's come back to rugby league essentially with his tail between his legs. I've got to say good on him for putting his hand up saying it's not going to work. I'm yep. coming back. But he has a point to prove, doesn't he? Yeah, I think it's going to be fascinating to see his game adapt and evolve. And, you know, that's something we wouldn't have seen if he'd stayed in rugby union. Um, you know, he's obviously, as Eric said, he would have slowed down a little bit. So, and that football brain, he probably has to use that a little bit more now because his feet aren't as quick as they used to be. Well, that's right. All the best players did. They evolved, they adapted, and they got better between, they got faster between the years as their feet slowed down. So, next few weeks will, uh, will be really interesting to see how, how Benji comes back. It's that time again, time for the Friday Arvo Footy Encouragement Award. Now, Martin Lenahan gave out the Encouragement Award last week and boys, he was just a bit too nice. He was too encouraging. That is not what the Encouragement Award is intended for. Eric, it's back to you to give it out this week. Fire up. Mate, this week's Encouragement Award is going to none other than John Grant. There's no such team as the Manly Seagulls, and Paul Gallen never played for the Cronulla Sutherland Hawks, mate. He's a commissioner of the NRL, and I know I, shouldn't probably, I probably shouldn't be saying bad stuff to you being the, one of the bosses of my sport, but pick your game up, buddy. This is on its way to you. He is, he is the boss, and if you keep ragging, him, ragging on him, you'll never play for the Cronulla Hawks again, mate. And I can't see the name E. Growth being in the rep teams that he reads out either. No, I'm getting used to that, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Well, there you John, go. John, John Grant joins a long list of people who have picked up the Encouragement Award. Uh, that's it for us this week in Friday Arbo Footy. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy all the rep games this weekend. We'll be back next week.